Hello everyone, it's Sorek and today I will present to you my device which is called Logger.s. It's a simple development board and logger for most of the BMWs from 90s and 2000s era. But it's not limited to BMWs it, and it can't be used with any car. The device has few connectors. On top you can find USB Type-C port, on the bottom analog port, SD card slot and on the left OBD port. The bottom 10-pin connector features four analog input 0 to 5 volts ground, K-line for standard data transmission, 12 volts, CAN low, CAN high and 5 volts which is regulated output for some sensors. On the side we have standard OBD connector and you can use it too, but the device will work with only this bottom connector too. Case is 3D printed and all the files and designs from Fusion 360 are available on our Discord channel when you can learn more about BMW tuning. Link is in the description. I recommend using the device with OBD extension cable that I provide. Ok, let's see what Logger.s actually can and can't do. But remember, being development board, you can write any software on it, so its features are limited only by your imagination. When the device boots up, you can see the version of the firmware and the ECU ID in the middle of the screen along with the logo. The default screen shows out the graphs with four different lines for each parameter you set up. That's the default one, you can change it later. I'll show you how to do it. Some of the parameters are predefined, you can always change the parameters you want to display and the names of them in the ECU's JSON file that I will explain in a while. Of course right now you cannot see much because it's the bench setup so not all the values are displayed correctly because there are just no inputs to the ECUs itself. But the battery voltage is actually true and you can see it changes each time I try to move the knob on my power supply. And just beneath the value with the unit you can actually see the minimum and the maximum value changing during our logging period. It's very easy to actually reset it, you just need to press the button for a little longer and you can see it's reset itself. Another thing I want to point out is obviously the logging feature. When you press the SD card and it turns to green, it means that the logging has started and you can stop it at any time. The file will be created in CSV format, so comma separated, so it's pretty standard. You can set the name of the logging file and just accept it. We'll see the file on the SD card just in a while. Another thing that you can do is stop the graphs and data displayed. It's useful when you're doing like a pull and then you want to analyze the data and see when the ups and downs are. You can also press and hold to reveal more on the screen so it's easy to read. On the right from pause button there is a data rate display and it means that now it's doing 33.3 Hz so responses per second and you can see the change in the smoothness of the graph. On some ECUs you can change the baud rate to a faster one with a press of a button. Short single press will change the data display and you can see the voltage gauge changing the values. Each dial has its own color and you can set what parameters to display. The next screen is histogram that you can set up by choosing the first three parameters. The y-axis is the first parameter, the x-axis is the second parameter and the value is the third parameter. So you can see it getting filled as you drive along. The next screen is quite straightforward. It's basically four values that are displaying all the time. Most ECUs have special menu defined when you can take a look at things like arrows and reset those errors or adaptations. As you can see, the values are here and with a special file you can actually see the code numbers and what they mean for your car. You can also save those errors onto SD card in a text format to read later on. You can also clear the errors and check if the number of errors decreased. You can also see knock tables for each cylinder 
and reset them if necessary. You can set up each parameter and it will be persistent after the reboot. Speaking of which, you can simply reboot the device by pressing the pause button for a while. If you change the baud rate before, it will take a while for the logger S to actually connect to the ECU. But as you see, our changes to the parameters were saved. Now for some more advanced fun. If we reset the device but we keep our finger or stylus on the screen while it boots, it will enter a special menu. With just few clicks in there, you can change the default is use.json file and you can set it up to anything you want that is on the SD card. The saved message will appear and you can restart the device to see the changes. I will reset the ECU so we don't have to wait for the boat range change. But have you noticed something in the left bottom corner? That's the our IP address. It means that the device connected to the Wi-Fi. And now you can see there are much more and different parameters to choose from. It's because we used extended logging patch from ms4x.net wiki, which link to is in the description. We restart the device once more and we enter our special menu. We select our old ecus.json file and press select. Now you can see that there are Wi-Fi on and Bluetooth on on or off buttons. Let's now head out to our desktop and type this IP address into our browser. This is our SD card explorer and we can take a look what is on SD card actually. Config.json file is one of the most important ones since we can set up lots of stuff in there. Files ending with itsuse.json set up our logging and other files like this text file is actually what we saved before while reading the errors. The CSV files can be downloaded and opened in something like Megalog Viewer or just in Excel. You can also delete files here if you don't need them. Those test files were created when we changed the name with our keyboard. Let's now take a look at our issues.json file and look at those autolog features. The autolog true it means that the parameter will autolog when the value exceeds the certain threshold. And autolog delay it means how long it will keep logging when the value is below the threshold. We can now press save button or control plus S and restart the device keeping the Wi-Fi on. The device will boot up and connect to the war Wi-Fi. But now we are not in a special menu, so when we will type our IP address, it will actually start showing graphs once the program is loaded. When the ECU connects, we can see that the parameters are actually sent out to the browser. Now we can choose which parameters we want to see and which to hide. Below there is a 3D histogram, so we can see our data in different way. The data is sent at very high speed and there is very little latency. But now, because we set up the autologging feature, when we go above 13 volts, it will start automatically logging. All parameters can be set up this way. But what will happen if we go below the value? Well, it will wait for our setup delay and then it will stop locking. If we come back to our threshold once again, it won't stop locking and it will extend this time. So that's a very nice feature. For example, if you're driving on a high RPM and you want to lock only high RPM during your drive. Now let's go back to SD Card Explorer and take a look at the file that we got. Once we restart the device and refresh our browser, we'll see a new file created by the autologging feature. 
we now right click and download the file and we will open it in Megalog Viewer HD. The prepared file is dense because it has 33.3 data rate per second, which is responses per second here as ERPS. At the end of the file you can see there is 5 second delay after the value went below the threshold. Let's now change a little bit the config.json file. We'll change the log from start option from false to true and also change sleep time to 5 seconds. We changed the Wi-Fi credentials to default ones and now we can change the SD card name to something different like E36M3 so we can distinguish which car are we having these logs from. Now when we connect, instead of normal IP address, we have this special IP address and message, access point created. Because we set a log from start feature, now when we get the data and device puts up properly, we see that it started logging and will log under the file name as we provided. We can turn the log off easily and turn it back on. When we turn the car off, the device will stop connecting and after our setting for delay, after it should go to sleep, it will sleep. Logger.s is sleeping to prevent the battery drain. This is so we can keep it in the car at all times. By pressing the screen, we'll wake it up and we'll connect to access point again. If it won't connect during our set sleep time, it will go back to sleep. We can now reset it and access it from the phone, connecting to the access point created. We'll now type in the IP address shown in the browser and we can edit the files. Let's turn off the log from start feature and change the SD name. Let's save and reboot the device. The device name got changed and SD didn't lock from the start. Now if we start logging and turn off the car, it will remember that we were logging and when it wakes up from the sleep, it will start logging automatically. When we change the rotation to 0 or 2, we will have the portrait mode that we will need to calibrate with something long and pointy, like this stylus. And when we set the force lock to true, we will also start logging from the start, but now each time we press the button it won't stop locking, but it will create new files. Portrait mode displays the data a little bit differently, but some people seem to like it. Now we turn off the force lock feature and change rotation back to normal, and now we need to recalibrate really fast to use the device again. Remember, you have to recalibrate your device each time you change the rotation. I will show you now how you can use logger.s as an impact cable. We will show you how to flash a firmware very easily using something like ms4x.net flasher. When there is data from USB, logger.s won't let you change the mode until it's finished receiving data. This is real time by the way, and after a while it finished with a success message. Now if we want to use Bluetooth we need to turn the Wi-Fi off because it's always higher in priority. For Bluetooth communication I recommend to use app called Altdroid which the link to you can find in the description. Before connecting though I would recommend changing the baud rate to faster one so we can use the faster data. After choosing our logger.s from devices we just need to choose the right data stream file that matches with our ECU that we're using. 
After pressing connect, we can see what data rate we actually having over the Bluetooth. It's quite impressive, I would say. The nice thing about using Altroid is that it saves also GPS data and accelerometers. The last thing that I wanted to show you in this video is the brightness change. The slider is appears after you press the mode button for a little longer. And now it saves its value, so it's available straight after the reboot. And the last, last feature is the ability to update the firmware of the Logger.s from the SD card. You just need to put the update.pin file onto the SD card main folder. Upload of the file takes a while, but now we are able to do it remotely. And also you can put your own pin files and use this as development board. I would like to say big thanks to all people that supported this project so far. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you know more about Logres now. In future videos I'll try to talk more about more advanced features like canary transmission and how you can use it. I will also show you how you can create your own definitions for its use and other very advanced things that you can do with this device. Thank you for watching again, goodbye.